with this book, I was really interested in trying to escape the uh, tyranny of the fact, I guess. You know, people take history very seriously in Newfoundland. You're going to get things wrong and people are going to get you. At the outset, what I was thinking was I wanted to write about the folklore of the place as opposed to the history of the place. Um, I mean, Newfoundland's been an oral culture for 300 or 350 years, and it's the folklore is full of the most amazing stories. And um, I, to me, those stories feel like the cultural DNA of the place, like it's what makes Newfoundlanders who they are. And um, I decided I was just going to dig in there and find the most outrageous, most outlandish stories I could find and shove them all into one book and see what happened. It's amazing how much of that stuff is still around. You know, it's just below the surface. Um, uh, my wife Holly and I have a little place in Western Bay, which is where my dad is from. And good friends of my parents are living there now. They retired back to Western Bay. So we spend a fair bit of time with them. And they were the ones who told me a story about some guy up the shore who died and was about to be buried. And he sat up in his coffin at the funeral and walked home from the church. And he took the wood from the coffin and made a daybed out of it and slept on that for years before he died the second time. I had a great time writing the book and felt free to just follow my nose on that, to write an entertaining story, to just have fun with it. And I think that that freedom that I felt and the, the fun that I was having with it is reflected in the novel itself. You know, I, the reason, one of the big reasons I wanted to call the book Galore was because of that sense of expansiveness I felt about the storyline and where the book was going. But there's an expansiveness to the narrative that felt new to me and that uh, I wanted to reflect in the title of the book as well.